Thank you so much, Neota. Well, I don't think, I know that there's more business information right here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Business Morning on Sunrise Daily. Uh, we do this in about 30 minutes, less than that, but we'll hear, do as much as we can. Now, let's start from the global space. Oil prices slipped on Friday on the possibility of a nearing Gaza ceasefire that could ease geopolitical concerns in the Middle East, while a stronger dollar and faltering U.S. gasoline demand also weighed on prices. Talking about prices, look at the numbers. It's red for this morning, uh, down to $85.25 uh, from about 86 it was in about 24 hours. Down 0.6%, that's for Brent. And then for WTI from the United States, where well, we see that the gap between Brent and WTI has, has widened compared to what we had yesterday, about $5, almost $5. 80 cents is what we have for WTI, uh, 55 cents for a barrel after it also dropped 0 0.6. Center. Looking at the drivers, the hope of a ceasefire in Gaza is one major one also. And then we're seeing some movement uh, when it comes to the value of the dollar. Uh, stronger dollar obviously makes oil more expensive and then demand drops. Uh, oil was trading low on reports of a United Nations draft resolution calling for that ceasefire. It seems to be somewhere in the horizon. We do pray for that. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken said he believed talks in uh, Qatar could reach a Gaza ceasefire agreement between Israel and Hamas. Uh, Blinken met with Arab foreign ministers and Egypt's president uh, in Cairo. In the United States, which is the world's top oil consumer, gasoline products supplied a proxy for demand slipped 9 million barrels for the first time in three weeks, and that indicates a possible slowdown in crude demand. Also, the value of the dollar a trade inversely with, trades inversely with uh, oil is threatened. And of course, when it threatens, then we see demand uh, also reducing. And still talking about oil now, the UK multinational financial institution, Standard Chartered Bank, has said that it expects global oil demand to reach new levels in May due to ongoing geopolitical tensions and supply constraints in the energy market. According to its latest analysis, key factors influencing this projection are stronger than expected demand growth observed in major economies recovering from the impact of geopolitical tensions such as the conflict which we talk about, talked about and uh, looking forward to a ceasefire from that talks. And then uh, yesterday we did see that uh, FAC uh, was shared between the three governments in Nigeria for the month of February. Look at the numbers. Total amount, total amount shared yesterday for February at 1.152 trillion naira. Total revenue uh, stood at 2.26 billion naira. Distributable statutory revenue was about 101. 0.3 billion naira uh, revenue from that uh, revenue from that we saw VAT that's value added tax or well, revenue was shared uh, after that meeting at the Fe uh, Federation Accounts Allocation chaired by the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy Mr. Wale Edu according to the communique we see the numbers there those are the details of what was shared yesterday uh, uh, after that meeting and we see revenue from VAT, um, uh, revenue from fat and VAT, uh, we see has gone up right there, 428.806 uh, for the month. Money transfer levy also contributed, the revenue also went up about 15.157 billion. Naira. Exchange difference revenue of 607.4 billion Naira, uh, at the end, at the end of that. All right, for our viewers uh, um, on DSTV, we'll take, uh, you have another view now. Yesterday, remember, we spoke to the co-founder of uh, Tonya Lumelu Foundation. She was here and told us they have an announcement today. Well, you're about to uh, hear that announcement. That's if you're watching on DSTV. We're about now to join uh, the law on, on DSTV only. Uh, Tonya Lumelu Foundation announcement of the 2024 beneficiaries. About 1,200 people are about to get their lives changed. Uh, venue is the UBA house in Marina. So for DSTV viewers, uh, 
it's time to go to the Tony Olimili Foundation. But for our other viewers online, on a local a platform, as well as uh, the UK 24, will continue with Business Morning. So now, um, let's talk about the Naira. Uh, we, we've seen movement since Friday, positive movement. Uh, uh, I don't know if it's applaudable, but we see positive movement. It keeps our hope up, but we still have a long way to go. Remember where we're coming from. Actually, we're coming from um, the dollar going for 115 Naira. That's where we're coming from at most 200 naira so let's see where we were yesterday at the close of trade uh we saw the nafem there was 2.63 percent increase on the value of the naira so it closed at 1453 naira 28 cover opened at 1492 naira 61 cover but i guess the more impressive I don't know if it's the more accessible one is on nafex nafex closed at 1000 382 naira 35 couple this is a two month high for the naira it looks close to what uh, goldman sachs said but we know that expectation for the naira looking for the fair value uh they've been put about 700 900 we'll talk more about that so yesterday on nafex uh, the naira gained more than 10 percent to close at 1382 naira 35 couple. This is the best we've seen in months but I guess there's not yet time to relax. Let's talk more on this. Finding the fair value of the Naira with Mr. Femi Onokare is the managing director of New Sananke Solutions. Uh, joins us in the studio right now to discuss this. Mr. Uh, um, Mr. Femi, thank you so much for your time and good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. Yeah, good, good to be here. Uh, so we're looking for the fair value of the Naira. Um, we know that Goldman Sachs has put it about 1,002 in 12 months. Um, but we know that other international bodies are talking about between 700 and 900. And we see the number right here. Um, we see yesterday it closed at 1,382. This is the best we've done in two months. Mm. But it's still not what we're used to. It's still biting hard, you know, okay. on Nigerians. Um, do you see this trend continuing? We've had it for five days now, since Friday last week. The Naira has been gaining. Do you see it continuing? Um, okay, so what's interesting, first, I think we should congratulate, you know, uh, the CBN government, government for all they've been doing with respect to the appreciation in the currency. Um, they made some pledges and they're pulling their weight. Um, so most of what we've seen has been a remarkable change in terms of uh, regulatory reforms and operations efficiency, right? They're block plugging holes and places that we've been leaking. So this trend is expected to continue right reasonably however there's also the caution regarding the fair value as you mentioned of what the naira should be um what the cbn is striving for at the moment is to ensure stability in the value of the currency for the fx now stability has a very important role to play in terms of growing the economy because what it means is that investors can make projections they have uh you know a mind frame that okay if i'm putting this amount within this frame even if i adjust for inflation and all this is what i expect the naira but we haven't heard we a, haven't heard um, an outlook or target from the cbn yes they have been quite they have been a bit silent on it and i think they don't want to commit until they get all their docs in line because um, aside from regulatory policy you can see a lot of house cleaning also going on you know at the cbn you know trying to put everything together and that's where we also should have a sense of caution because they don't want to mislead it uh, the, the but, we, but we have a target for inflation uh, yes <laughs> no because inflation is a consequence of other actions so you can actually set a target uh, yeah, with but, respect but to monetary inflation policy in nigeria is a consequence issues. of factors that are not controlled by the cbn that are outside uh, the monetary uh, uh, policy oh okay so um essentially inflation everywhere in the world is a consequence of a lot of things that are out of the control of the regulator. What the regulator tries to do is to stem it, to manage it, so that the burden of inflation does not affect the economy too negatively. So uh, what the CBN is trying to do right now, because our inflation figures go from, uh, to, we are 31.7%, I think, they're about, uh, and it is the highest in 
28 years. Because of that concern, the CBN is trying to manage it. So the first thing they're striving for is stability in the exchange rate numbers. And then once they do that, they're also pushing for sustainability of whichever rate. Is. This will be driven by the fiscal policy, you know, conditions that they're putting in place, which uh, is going to affect sectors like, you know, manufacturing, services, and the rest of that. All those things, because GDP, ultimately, all this growth means nothing if it does not trickle down to the economy and affect people. We can celebrate the nice numbers, but if there is no progressive change or Im impact in terms of, you know, purchasing power of, uh, you know, the average Nigerian, then it really does not mean so much. And I think that's why the CBN is also being cautious in terms of, you know, giving a particular fix on it. And from this point on, they can now focus on, you know, trying to push down inflation, which is what the increase in the interest rate was actually supposed to achieve. And, you know, it has actually given the market a bit more stability since that uh, the MPC had you know, the meeting uh, regarding that position. Mm -hmm. So we see it appreciating a bit more, right? But there is really no um, uh, fixed and firm position because interventions will continue until yeah, the Yeah, there was an intervention in the market yesterday, actually. Yes. The central bank. <laughs> yeah, in <laughs> fact, in the, in the space of a week, like two. This much, yeah. yeah, in the space of like a week, we've had like two, you know, interventions. Some banks were selling for as low as a uh, thousand, three ten and all, you know. So it was, it, it's part of the plan to mm. push down, you know, in, inflationary pressure, control and, you know, present stability in the market. And then from there, we can take it forward and start looking at the f fiscal policy and, you know, Increasing uh, consumer purchasing power, uh, diversification of the economy in terms of uh, us not that's, importing so much and using. Long, that sounds like a long term uh, step. It's, it's an iterative process. So you will take it small by small. So let me give you an example. Um, you were talking about the FAC uh, allocation. Yes. You, you know. Now, what that does is okay, so they've given the states and the local governments and you know, federal government, they're doing stuff. What the funds are supposed to do is actually to create opportunities in the economy to open it up so that jobs are created. Um, you can create subventions, you can create credit lines for businesses. That is what that will do. Now, the stimulation of the economy from that grassroots point would actually solidify whatever gains we are having. Mm -hmm. in the, you know, so that, that reminds me of the conversation that uh, uh, my colleagues in Sunrise Daily were having with the chief executive officer of NESG. And he put it, uh, because sometimes it seems we just look at the federal government, look at the federal government, and we forget what the subnationals are doing. Now, FAC has been allocated, um, the states have their share and all of that. And then there's the security vote, which we don't have so much information <laughs> on, yes. you know. And so what are they doing, you know, building on resources that are inherent in their state? Because all of this would reduce the demand for FX. Exactly. Because if we have, for instance, more supply of food, we know that food inflation now is about 37%. It's, you know, it's, it's you, really And it's a ridiculous. major driver. Then we have imported inflation as a major one, putting more pressure and on the And we have artificial. We have currency. What I told you the last time, we we're talking about the units of currency inflation. Because we don't spend a small unit in our currency. So when you're going to jump up, rather than jumping by one naira or two naira, it jumps by 10 naira, 20 naira, 15 naira, which is not really reflective of the demand and supply prices in the market. It changes the whole dynamics. We have um, inflationary pressures coming from uh, restocking risk, as some, some will say. So it's they bought at a particular price, it's now selling at a higher price, you know. Because of the expectation, expectation of what that it will cost, cost to, restock. to restock. And then that increases the prices inordinately for the driving inflation, you know, or upwards. I think what is important right now, and this is where we should hold ourselves accountable as citizens, um, it's about holding the guys who have been given the uh, responsibility, right? Our representatives at, uh, you know, state government level, at local government levels, right? What are you doing with these funds? We should have proper monitoring channels in terms of disbursement, in terms of projects implementation and impact assessment for each of the projects. Yeah, we should not limit the funding to, there's been a lot of talk about palliatives, palliatives. We shouldn't limit it to handouts. It's important that people get to earn Right? And they are productive and contributing to the economy. That's what would make it a sustainable structure that we can build, you know, further mm. on. Mm. So I, I like what you said that, I mean, everybody has to contribute to this. Do we see Nigerians intentionally, uh, <laughs> well, except force because of prices, turning or changing their demands to domestically produce or locally produce products? Um, there's a saying that's popular, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Um, so what happens is, if you, the affordable, 
or the the uh, what do they call it? The available the, is not affordable. They, yes, they, I mean, they are, the, uh, they are, yeah, they, they are, they are the available affordable, is not affordable. They are affordable because they are available or something yeah, like that. Yeah, so that's what is going to happen. Um, we need to start creating alternative channels for some of these things. We really do not need some of them. Um, if you go back to the 80s, right, and the 70s, the 80s, and you compare some of the demands we have and the tastes we have currently with those times, you would wonder that uh, were we not surviving in those periods? We were surviving. We didn't have such heavy demands on those things. But now a lot of those things have become very normal. They're expected, which is okay, right? However, what are we doing about local alternatives? Um, yam, literally, we, we, when we were growing up, cassava was practically everywhere. Every secondary school student had a farm for cassava. You would contribute your bit to the school's harvest, and then they would sell it and all that. We need to go back to some of those foundational things, right, and start improving local production. Gary was supposedly a staple at the time. Now, Gary is not mentioned as a staple. We do, it's just an afterthought. Right, rice is more our staple. And remember, we got to this point with rice, even though we have increased our local production, we got to this point with rice from importation. Importation was driven by what? Subsidized USD. So for a long time, we had been living what I would call fake life. Right? <laughs> so now what, what do you say to, um, we had the other day the president say they're going to open all borders, or they have opened all borders, and now the CBN has removed the restriction on dairy products. You know, when all of that, and, you know, I don't know, finding a balance could also be difficult because um, what the government is trying to do is to ensure their supply. So that will bring down the price. But in the midst of that, what's happening to domestic uh, factories, what's happening to our taste, as you have noted, you know, and how do we find a long term solution to it? So it's a yin yang effect. You need to find a balance. So, um, first of all, in achieving this, there's a need for trade lib liberalization. Right. Um, the previous administration had a good idea, no, no doubt about it, that we should ramp up production in some sectors. Fine. But right now, we feel that okay, we have gotten to a level, and then the level of different uh, uh, scarcity that we have experienced as a country has driven consumer, you know, uh, uh, what's it called, purchasing price. I mean, people can't really afford a lot of things. So we want to liberalize trade for but you need to have strong controls in terms of the liberalization. It's not so much that it's going to be free for all as it were before. You would have to now put proper and stronger controls. What the government will now do on the other end is that while you're scaling and trying to you liberalize the market, you also empower the local manufacturers, right? The local producers. You make it more affordable. You make it more attractive so that it can compete with the other markets. Remember, the only reason those guys have, um, what's it called, favorable prices, as we say, is because of economies of scale, right? Because of economies of scale, they can create a, a single unit that is cheaper compared to what we will do here. So how do we achieve that? We're talking about issues regarding infrastructure development. We're talking about power, right? Being stable and regular, being dependable for and production. Security. We're talking about security being, <laughs> a, you know, something that is no longer, it's not seen as a government thing, it's seen as a collective right effort to enforce some of the things that we've heard and read regarding the security situation it seems targeted at the economy to subvert you know just create mayhem some of these things can be tackled if we can get the different localities the different communities involved in the security architecture which is why some governments are pushing for state government, uh, state, state policing, policing again. Do you, do you think that will solve the problem? Um, it, it, I think that it's about Because the you know, there's also the risk of state governments Becoming now manipulating yes. exactly. So it's about the structure. Um, I believe that essentially ideas are not bad in and of themselves. It's how you implement them that is really the issue. So what are the structures that will have guiding state police, for example? Those are the questions we'll be, we should be having, not if state police is good or if it is bad, what are the fundamental responsibilities? What are the deliverables? Each of these uh, different uh, agencies should have KPIs that are accountable, not just to the government, right, but also to the people, such that once you push some of these initiatives out, we can say, oh, no, it's doing what it's supposed to do, or it is not doing what it's supposed to do. And of course, you also have to curtail it. Excess, um, they say power corrupts, uh, uh, Absolute power, and absolute absolute crop. Absolutely. absolutely. So that's what would happen. If you give too much leeway without a proper structure, without a proper containment to deploy, you have the risk of down the line suffering, you know, such uh, debilitating effects. All right. So we have to thank you so much, Mr. Nakare, yeah. uh, Managing Director of Nusanake Solutions Limited.
for it's, sharing your thoughts with us this it's morning. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. All right. Great. So let's uh, move to the markets now and see how that traded yesterday, beginning with the um, NGX. For the first time this week, we saw that the NGX gained. It gained 0.13%. Uh, but I mean, the good thing is, even in spite of, you know, uh, how many days of a negative trade we still saw it's around 104,000 so yesterday it came back from 104,100 to 104,387.47 the equities cap um this needs to cross the 60 trillion naira one of these days, you know. Let's see if it will happen at the close of trade today, yeah? And um, that's so yesterday, market gained 73.88 billion naira, and that was 0.13% uh, up uh, looking at the all share index. And the activity chart was very green, also. We see that the volume gained more than 12%, value about 35.7%. While, um, although deals has dropped from the 9,000, it was on uh, most of last week, but it gained 6.57% at the close of trader sectors that did well. Almost everybody uh, did well uh, yesterday, except for consumer goods and uh, oil and gas, oil and gas was uh, unchanged at the close of trade. Movers of the market yesterday, the Fugas, UBA, UBA, 63.88 million uh, of its uh, units were traded. Access Core, and we know something interesting is going on with Access Core. They're acquiring the National Bank of Kenya. That's a big move. Perhaps that is going to attract investors' uh, sentiment to it, even though we do know that they say when you cross the border, it doesn't really affect directly the value of the shares. But, I mean, there were the top trades yesterday. Zenit Bank also made it right there, 21.77 million. We'll go to the unlisted market, uh, see how that did. It was a negative trade for unlisted market yesterday. It was down 0.29%, but still around 1,000, 1,057 for its share index. Uh, market cap, 1.433 trillion naira. They seem to have stabilized on that above 1 trillion naira, which is a bit of comfort. Uh, for that market. But we see the activity chart wasn't looking so good. Uh, we see a drop in volume, in value, and in deals. Only six stocks traded. Uh, it's a small market, uh, so any movement we see. So um, uh, while the volume was 218,390, uh, value was at 24.7 million, with six stocks traded at the close of trade. We move over to the fixed income market to see how that did. Uh, treasury bills uh, yesterday, the secondary market opened on a calm again for a while. Now it's been calm, but now we have fact. Perhaps we'll have some movement at the close of trade, a bullish undertone, although, uh, although with uh, demand across curve with emphasis on the, as we see the um, June 2024 uh, security, February 2025 also followed right there at uh, 40 deals valued at 61.32 billion naira at the close of trade. I uh, see the bonds market and see that there were 38 deals in the bonds market worth 21.99 billion naira uh, value. I mean, the June 2053 uh, uh, security had the most attention yesterday, followed by the March 2027. Uh, right there and um, we've seen the NTB and Omo that's for the central bank had only three deals worth nine billion naira now let's see if we have Ambrose Omodio now go back uh, a bit to our NGX and see uh, how that market did and um, what to expect seeing that we had the first positive trade at the close of trade yesterday hello Ambrose good morning Good morning. So yesterday was the first positive trade we've had this week, but we don't know if to hold our breath or if to release it, if we're expecting more positive, at least for today. Yeah, actually, it has been uh, a mixed market for almost uh, four trading days in the market. We saw what we call a very black uh, crown. Yes, we saw a, what we call a, a bullish uh, hammer yesterday. We confirmed that the market will be up today. But for investors in the market, I've seen that is the high cap stocks that kind of uh, put the market up as at yesterday. But for the last uh, previous days, it was profit taking and also in some uh, blue chip company 
but market remain in terms of uh, what we call market internals. But I believe that uh, the market has lacked you no know, real no corporate action, essence of corporate action within the week. That's why market is a bit calm to what we saw this week. But also, also there another notification from uh, the financial sector, especially the insurance uh, companies, where they are notifying the market also of a delay in the award in relation to their audited account. That also will push investors back again to themselves to see what is happening in the market. And also, CBN are also delayed in that you know, kind of um, approving banks number that we sent to them before now. All these things are keeping the market in a very you know, quiet mood. But we believe that we are entering you know, the last uh, week for the, you know, that they all call uh, the deadline for you to submit your results for the companies from next week. That might change the mood of the market. But for this week, the mistrend we have seen will continue today, being the last week of the week. Because all eyes are still on what NPC meeting coming up next you know, next week, more than Tuesday. Because mm. the inflation that the NPC committee or the trying to curtail, you know, we saw that the, the last figure that came from the month of um, February was almost 28 high, 28 years high, around the 31.7. But don't forget that this uh, NPC was held almost the last day of February, which is um, you know, 27 and 26. Then, for what to say the impact of the last year, uh, Almost a uh, 400 basis point increase in rate. It's this month of, uh, you know, of March. But also having another NPC coming up next week. For me, I believe that that meeting is just for them to come and drink tea because they've not seen impact of what they've done more. That's why they're making stability. We need to see more of that before this commitment. But I believe that it's for them to assess their first turn they have made for now. That's what will give us a direction. But one thing that is very um, positive, we can see that we are seeing another appreciating. If this were attract foreign investors and also kind of boost our productivity is what we are going to look at because that is the most important because many companies on the exchange have put their losses because of our FS issue. If we are trying to address that, that aspect of our economic problem, fine. But would that also attract foreign investors and also boost our productivity? This is something that we should consider in the next meeting, not really going to high rate again. That is why I see because I will tell you that our you no know, inflation is not a result of where you no know, too much money is happening. Good people are kind of you know. I can no point to. I believe that it is other structural issues that are put in the question where it is. And also, I believe that the committee members also look at it. That will not shape you no know, investors' uh, direction. But next week, being the last week for you know, what we call uh, the deadline for some results, will also change the market. We also, we have seen one company uh, yesterday notifying the market of, board, of their board meeting to approve the results by next week. For that, it's not going to change the market. But for this week, the market has been absent of what result. Don't forget that price feed on what. On earnings, and if earnings are not available, movement will be what will be limited. All right, Ambrose. So well, I must say you covered all grounds because I wanted to ask about you know what investors are expecting from the MPC meeting. But well, seeing that you've covered all of that, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts and time with us this morning, Ambrose Modia. Thanks for having me. So that's it. Uh, um, next week, Monday and Tuesday, uh, decision day would be, MPC's decision day would be on Tuesday. And our studios will be open with our panelists to talk about some of this, uh, which we've been discussing since last month. Will the MPC hike rate again, just about a month since it had a 400 basis point hike. And what will investors be thinking or doing with that? Well, that'll be on Monday and Tuesday. So you don't want to miss both Business Morning and Business Incorporated. I'll be back at 1 p.m. with Business Incorporated to take you through the wider world of business. Uh, that'll be for 55 minutes. For now, it's back to the Sunrise Daily Studios.